Lesson 59, Influencing Government, Part 1. Public Opinion. Public opinion, the ideas and attitudes that most people hold about elected officials, candidates, government, and political issues. Public opinion is not uniform. There are many shades of opinions on most issues. Influences on public opinion. Your ideology, government, the media, private groups, otherwise known as interest groups. Experts often describe public opinion in terms of direction, intensity, and stability. Direction, whether opinions on a topic are positive or negative, for or against. Intensity, strength of opinion of an issue. Stability, how firmly people hold their views. Public opinion is measured by polling organizations. They question people selected at random from all over the United States. The sample must reflect the characteristics of the entire population, and the questions must be fair and unbiased. Most major news organizations run polls. Gallup is one of the first, most famous polls. Sometimes polling organizations are wrong. There's Harry Truman holding up the very famous Chicago Daily Tribune newspaper in which the headline declares, Dewey defeats Truman. Also, many polls had Secretary of State Clinton leading the election against Donald Trump in 2016. Many of those polls were wrong. But they are usually very accurate. Polls can be taken on any subject or topic. Presidential approval ratings is a popular polling topic. Here's a poll on this question. When you retire, do you think you'll have enough money to live comfortably or not? With respect to the abortion issue, would you consider yourself to be pro-choice or pro-life? Do you think it is essential that the next Supreme Court Justice be a woman, Hispanic, black? Is it a good idea, but not essential? Does it matter to you? Do you think it's a bad idea? Election results give a broad measure of public opinion. A pollster is a professional whose job it is to conduct polls on a regular basis. A very prominent Republican pollster is Frank Luntz. Joel Benenson is a very notable Democrat pollster. The mass media serves to influence politics and government, forms a link between people and elected officials. We have the print media, such as newspapers, magazines, books, etc. The electronic media, radio, TV, of course, the Internet. Print media, I won't miss it. Well, print media captures an event like the electronic media cannot. You also have a piece of history with the print media that you can hold in your hands. Above the fold, 
These are the stories that the editors of the newspapers feel are most important. They put above the crease or the fold in the newspaper. So when the newspaper is in the stand for sale, people can take a look at the big stories of the day and see if they want to purchase the newspaper. We call that above the fold. Of course, these are editorial decisions that newspaper editors have to make. Electronic media, smart devices allow us to get information about almost any subject or topic instantaneously. We have all this information available to us at our fingertips. Television is the most important medium for politics because it reaches the most people. I will say, though, that probably is. Uh, the internet and social media is uh, rapidly taking the place of television. Facebook postings, Twitter. Many people get their news and information from those social media sites, more and more so than television these days. The media greatly influences which problems the government and citizens consider important uh, from, and the, the terms used here are priming and framing. The age-old question is, is there a liberal media basis? I guess the question or the, or the big catchphrase now is fake news. Fake news. It used to be, is the media liberally biased? That used to be the big question. Conservatives control talk radio. Sean Hannity, a very popular conservative voice, probably the king of talk radio is Rush Limbaugh in the middle. Glenn Beck has a big following. Mark Levine, Hugh Hewitt, he's a big conservative media personalities. Here's the bottom line about the media. It's a business. They operate for a profit, just like any other business. They cover stories that they think will attract the largest audience. Do they sens sensationalize the news? Well, perhaps. They're trying to get ratings. They're trying to get clicks on their website. Elected officials and the press need one another, but they often clash. Our need for information and the government's need to protect national security often leads to tension. The media is without question a watchdog. It plays a very important role. It serves the public interest by exposing government misconduct. Freedom of the press, written into the First Amendment, includes freedom from prior restraint or government censorship of material before it is published. The FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, can penalize stations that violate its rules, but cannot censor broadcasts. The government has the power to decide who gets access to the radio and television airwaves by issuing licenses. Journalists can report what they want, even if it is unpopular or embarrassing to officials. Journalists have begun focusing on scandals in officials' private lives. The big scandal these days is sexual misconduct. And many journalists, or I shouldn't say many, but several notable journalists recently have been accused of sexual misconduct. In addition to politicians and Hollywood personalities... Bill Clinton, I did not have sex with that woman. When he was president, of course, he had an affair in the Oval Office with an intern. Former New York Governor Elliot Spitzer, his prostitution scandal. Tim Mahoney paid his mistress hush money to keep quiet about their affair. Mark Sanford was hiking the Appalachian Trail 
when he was actually having an affair. Political pundits commentate on the news and offer their opinions. Don't confuse journalists with pundits. A journalist reports the news. A pundit comments on the news. You could say that Brian Williams is a journalist, whereas Rachel Maddow is a pundit. Recognize media bias. Fox News and MSNBC have certain political biases. They're reporting the news from different political perspectives. And you may even say they have agendas. Recognize it. Chris Hayes, MSNBC, Sean Hannity, Fox News, Megyn Kelly, who's no longer on Fox News, Lawrence O'Donnell on MSNBC, and you got Tucker Carlson on Fox News. Interest groups, people who share a point of view about an issue. They work to persuade others and government officials towards their point of view. So what's the difference between an interest group then and a political party? Interest groups want to influence policy. Political parties want to win elections. Sometimes that is one and the same. Other times it is not. Interest groups can promote any type of interest, economic, a professional interest, an ethnic group, an age group, a special cause. The American Civil Liberties Union on the upper left, AARP uh, for retired persons interest group. I received my AARP uh, letter soon after turning 50. The Christian Coalition of America, People for the American Way. The Sierra Club is a major environmental interest group. Planned Parenthood is controversial. National Rifle Association may be the most powerful and influential interest group of them all. The National Organization for Women. The Veterans of Foreign Wars. Uh, so, uh, Greenpeace. So, you know, you have interest groups on all sorts of topics. The primary goal is to influence government officials and public policy. And to do so, they use PACs, which are political action committees, and lobbyists. A lobbyist is a paid professional, a representative of an interest group, meets regularly with lawmakers and tries to influence them. Lobbyists at work. Um, I used to be a political lobbyist. Then came along this chance to be a slug. <laughs> so usually uh, lobbyists are not held in too high regard. But what they do, they provide information to lawmakers in an attempt to sway them to pass policies that benefit the lobbyist interest group. Lobbyists cannot give money or expensive gifts to lawmakers. That's against federal law. Political action committees, or PACs, these are organizations established by corporations, labor unions, other special interest groups to support candidates who favor their positions on issues by contributing money to their parties or to their candidates. PACs collect money from members of their groups and use it to support candidates and also to oppose others. In some Lobbyists provide information. PACs donate money. And uh, this will conclude Lesson 59, Part 1 of Influencing Government.